Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. I'm going to do a quick response to a really cool thread that Gary over at Physical Format Rock and Roll put up the other day. Uh, he had this really cool idea where he picked a number of random VC members and just individually said to each one of them, this is a video I would love to see you do. And he gave a subject matter. And he happened to include me inside of that and I wanted to jump on board and do a response. Uh, as well as a uh, Logan over at Murmur Than Hell, he mentioned me in, in one that he did as well. And so I'm going to come back uh, probably this afternoon and do a response to his video as well. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to kind of jump on board. Make sure you go check it out. I think this is going to be a, a really fun one that kind of catches on in the VC. But uh, plain and simple, what he asked me about was uh, he kind of knows that a big part of my collecting revolves around condition, where I'm very, very particular about the condition of albums that come into my collection and have done a, a good job of kind of keeping my collection very, very clean. So his question was kind of, show me 10 or 11 of like the worst condition albums in your collection. So that's what I'm going to do here. And so I'll start off here with the, the first four I'm going to show actually comes out of a specific section in my collection that I have a divider that's labeled Finders Keepers is that the actual name of the section and there's only about maybe 13 14 albums in that section but what finders keepers are are those are albums that i that are not in my collection and no they're, they're officially not in my collection because they're not in good enough condition to be in my collection but they're albums that i want to keep until i find excellent or near mint copies of them because when i want to listen to if i still want to listen to it i like to have it there but they're just not quite good enough for me to feel like i want to put them in my collection so that's what the first four are. So I'll start off here by showing you this uh, Bar K Soul Finger. And I kind of note them by putting just a little red sticker there with a star in the middle of it. Uh, that way I don't accidentally file it away in my you know regular collection if I do happen to pull it out and listen to it. But um, yeah, as you can see here, you know, some pretty strong ring wear going through there and that infamous hole punch that I can't stand. I mean, if cutouts aren't bad enough for me, those hole punches just drive me crazy. Um, but yeah, so, you know, name written on the back there, that type of thing. But, it, you know, it's a, it's a cool original pressing. And I do have a, a nice music on vinyl reissue of it, but I would love to get my hands on an original pressing of this. So uh, I'm going to keep this one until I do. But that's one. Same thing here with Defenders of the Faith by Judas Priest. And I try to tilt it so you can see enough. You can see kind of some edge wear there at the bottom, um, you know, some ring wear coming through there as well as at the top. I'm sorry, right through there. And um, and yeah, and again, not that's not horrible. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will look at that and say that's just like an average typical album. Um, you know, a little bit of spine wear on the spine there. But again, for something that's probably, uh, you know, just an average $15 album or something like that, I just feel like at some point I could find a nice near mint copy of that. Um, you know, an original pressing of that's from 1984. So that's one of my finders keepers. Uh, my AMG 12 inch single. <laughs> a little bit of fun from back in my college days. Uh, I want to be your hoe and bitch better have my money. You can see the rounded corners there. And, you know, even though it's not showing up on camera, a bunch of, of creases in there. But I just found this in a dollar bin and it's a fun listen. And uh, hopefully one day I'll find a, a near mint copy of that to get into the collection. And the last one out of the Finders Keepers I'll show is this one here, which is the Beat Street Volume 2. Another one I'm really looking forward to getting a nice, excellent near mint copy of. Um, again, not showing up as well, but there's some, some dirt and ring wear through here. And there is kind of a lot of dirt in the yellow that's not really showing up on the camera there. But great, great freaking album. I'm definitely not getting rid of that until I can get my hands on a, a nice replacement. So now as far as albums in my regular collection... These next two are in my collection strictly for sentimental value, or they would have been gone a long time ago. Uh, John Coltrane's Love Supreme. This is a 1974 U.S. pressing. As you can see there, good chunk of ring wear going on there. Nice flat spine has been flattened out. Um, you know, price sticker halfway on there. You can't peel off the wrist because otherwise it pulls off, makes it a white spot and pulls off the cover. And more ring wear there on the back. The only reason I keep this album is because this is the first jazz album I ever bought. Like, this is the album that got me into jazz. Like, not only A Love Supreme, but this specific copy. Uh, back when I was listening to, when I first, first, first started collecting vinyl, I'm talking about, like, 
maybe 75 records in my collection. Um, I was in a store flipping through and a guy was playing that and I was just like, that stuff feels good. What is that? And I went and asked him, he's like, it's John Coltrane. I'm like, what's a Coltrane? And he started telling me a bit about him and I bought that album. It was like $12.99. And uh, that was the first thing that turned me on to, hey, this jazz stuff can actually be kind of cool. And today you guys have probably seen my jazz collection and you know Morgan, Dexter, um, you know, on and on McCoy, like I all of that stemmed from buying that one album that day. So I, I keep that one for sentimental sake. Exact same thing here with this 12 inch single of Land of Hunger. Uh, back when I was in junior high, uh, I didn't collect records or anything, but I stumbled across this one at, at a, a shop that was downtown by this baseball card shop I used to go to because that's what I really collected back then. And uh, I love this song. I you know love seeing them on Video Soul. And I was never able to find a cassette or anything, but I found this for a dollar. And I was like, I could have that song. And I bought it. And so, uh, you know, it, I, I wasn't a record collector, so there was no collection to keep track of. And it got lost over the years. And I went to school. And just a few years ago, my mom found that when she was cleaning out the garage. And I was like, holy cow, this thing from way back in junior high. So, again, sentimental reasons on that one. Next one here is going to be Black Sabbath Paranoid. And of course, you can see this is a, a, a promo, white label promo. So the, the record is actually excellent to excellent, maybe excellent minus. So the record is in really great shape. Uh, even the cover doesn't have any creases. It's only that ring wear that you see there. So I would have to say just from a cover condition with that much ring wear, that probably has been one of the worst in my collection, but it's a freaking white label promo. Uh, the only other ones I could come up with were this one here, which is the R. Kelly. If you can see a little bit of corner wear there, and it's not showing up here, but I guess there was a little bit of a seam split that might have started to take place, and somebody put a little piece of clear tape right across there. But, uh, I mean, other than that, the record's in pretty good condition, but, you know, normally that tape going across there is not something I would accept, but not really that noticeable and not an easy-to-find album. Uh, Sweet Home Chicago. Same thing, you can see the ring wear there, and what's also not showing up is just kind of like some, just some dirtiness in the yellow, or the orangish yellow, whatever that is there, but still plays great, and overall, I mean, the cover's in pretty good condition, except for that, that bit of dirt that's going on there, and this is about one of the only other ones I could find, which is the Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation, which looks pretty darn clean, I mean, there's, there's one big crease that kind of goes right across here, and maybe it's couple of tiny ones right there um, but I mean the record itself is in excellent condition and it's just again that's just um, you know I don't know it's just <laughs> that's about as bad as some things get and last but not least this uh, sugarcane Harris you can kind of see the ring wear on that one there so so yes, I mean, that, that's about as bad as the condition gets on any of my records. Those are definitely probably my 10 worst right there. And uh, and I've always said, you know, it's, it's not like you have to, you're not spending more or having to do anything besides being a little more patient. Like the, that's, that's really the only difference I feel in, in like curating a collection that's really, really solid and one that's kind of rough. It's just having a bit of patience and you find that $5 record that you really want and it's just like, hmm. It has that big thing right there. I'm just going to be patient and wait until the next $5 one comes along, and eventually I'll find an excellent to near mint one. Um, but that's just kind of been, been my approach. So anyway, there you go, Gary. Uh, appreciate it, man. Like I said, I'll be back soon to do a response to Logan's question. And if any of you make a video where you ask me a question, please shoot me a quick message uh, and let me know because I'm going to make sure I try to answer every single one that someone throws me in on this thread. So appreciate you guys as always, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, VC.